Is the genetic code really a code? It is a code, it's definitely a code, but nevertheless, there is no problem in saying that DNA would be a code in just the same kind of way as a computer code. It certainly is a code. Uh, you can read it as a code. You could, you could even transcribe, I think I put this in River Out of Eden, you could even transcribe a book oh, into yeah. DNA letters and you could read it out again. You could, could preserve it in DNA. That's, that's how code-like it is. It really is completely code-like code. A digital code is merely quaternary rather than binary. We've shown that DNA is actually the software of life. It's totally interchangeable between the digital world and the biological world. The DNA code itself is so digital, is so almost exactly like uh, a computer tape. Science. Scientists have come to the amazing conclusion that our bodies contain digital code. digital code. In fact, Bill Gates, you know, the founder of Microsoft, tweeted, DNA is more advanced than any software ever created. Ever created. Ever created. Think about it. A program or code is written by someone very smart. The more complex the code, the more intelligent the author has to be. So here's the question. If our DNA code is more complex than any man-made software, where did it come from? Is it possible it was authored without an author, author without programmed, a without a program, programmed without a program? Materialists think so through neo-Darwinism, the modern version of Darwinian evolution. Stephen Meyer, author of the New York Times bestseller, Darwin's Doubt, explains. According to neo-Darwinism, new genetic information arises as a result of random mutations in the arrangement of the nucleotide bases along the spine of the DNA molecule. If those random changes are beneficial, they're passed on and preserved, and if many such changes are preserved and passed on, they would accumulate over time and eventually result in a very significant change in the morphology, the form of the organism. That's like saying if this game had glitches every time it was copied online, and gamers shared their favorite mutated versions and trashed the rest, it would eventually turn into this. Come on, really? If we know the computer glitches won't produce a new video game, how much sense does it make to believe that glitches, copying errors, and our DNA code can produce new organisms? Could random mutations in DNA really produce this? 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 What about this? 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 Or this? Everything we know about software shows that random changes in a section of functional code or functional information is going to degrade that information long before you ever get to something fundamentally new. And that's the problem with the mutation selection mechanism as an explanation for new genetic information. Information in DNA is also essentially typographic or digital. And there are far more ways to go wrong in arranging those characters than there are ways to go right. And so as you begin to randomly change them, you inevitably fall into a non-functional abyss long before you ever generate anything fundamentally new. So just how unlikely is it for random genetic changes to produce something new, even something as modest as a protein structure with a new function? One scientist performed experiments that enabled him to actually calculate the odds, and they aren't good. In fact, they're next to impossible. We caught up with a molecular biologist, Douglas Axe, in Seattle. In our lab work, we, we've asked how rare or how common functional proteins are within the space of possibilities. Doing experiments and calculations, we found that they're exceedingly rare, like one in 10 to the 74th power rare. To get a feel for those odds, imagine that somebody hid one atom somewhere within the Milky Way galaxy, and you, blindfolded by chance, are supposed to pick one atom and hope that it's the right one. Those odds would be better than the odds for the protein. Axe calculated the probability for all the chance mutations in all of the life forms on Earth for billions of years. And in all that time, he found they couldn't chance on even one new functional protein structure. Not one. Zero. And keep in mind, 
it takes thousands of distinct proteins to build any kind of complex life, including humans. And many of these proteins are unique to each individual life form. So we go from improbable to basically impossible. The bottom line is that the mutation selection mechanism simply lacks the creative power to generate the new information necessary to build new organisms in the history of life. If the material processes of mutation and natural selection aren't capable of producing the biological information needed for life, then where did it come from? Our uniform and repeated experience, as Darwin himself pointed out, is the basis of all scientific reasoning about the past. So when we see information in a digital form in software, or we see a paragraph in a book, and we trace that information back to its source, we always come to a mind, not a material process. That's part of what we know from our observation of the world around us, that information always arises from an intelligent source. So we can apply that knowledge to the question of historical biology. And when we see that information is the foundation of life, we can infer that the best explanation for the origin of that information is in fact also a mind, a conscious agent, not an undirected material process. When presented with evidence that conflicts with neo-Darwinism, most scientists cling to a belief in the blind process of evolution, denying what science has discovered that at the foundation of life, there exists a code so complex and advanced that it defies chance. They make no room for the possibility that we were created by an intelligence far more sophisticated than the most genius of programmers. Instead, they choose to limit their investigation to a strictly materialist worldview. When faced with this evidence, how will you respond? We are not materialists. We see the human soul. We experience love. We, we live with, with purpose. purpose. We fight for justice. We acquire maturity and we will be quiet no 